Hi everyone, welcome to the first part of the tutorial for CT43, an Alip Bata original. As always, a quick thank you to my top tier patrons first. The first part of the tutorial will be released on YouTube. For full access to the whole archive, please check out my Patreon page. The tab and notation file are available through the music notes link down below in the description. The introduction is a bit longer than usual, so feel free to use the chapters down below to advance to the part you want. Because I'll be honest, this is the second version of the intro. I recorded this lesson video over six weeks ago, thinking it was just going to be another guitar lesson. And then the cover video of the song blew up, giving me my very first taste of what it feels like to go slightly viral. In the following weeks, the amount of subscribers here nearly doubled, mostly Alip Bata fans, exposing me to a whole new audience. So for those of you who just joined us here, Welcome to the channel. Just know that whenever I make a lesson on a certain song, it is always meant as a tribute and as a sign of respect to the original artist. And I never try to imply that I can play it better or that I know more than him or her. And also in response to probably the most frequent comment on the cover video, I'm not Steven Gerrard. I'm not even into soccer. I had to look up his name to see what you guys were all talking about. I just wish I had his money. But no. Anyway, back to the song. CT43 is an amazing blues tune and I dropped whatever I was working on when I first heard it and got straight to work on the transcription. And I can assure you it is tons of fun to play. It's one of those songs you simply can't play just once. Now normally I can't display tablature in the video because of copyright issues, but apparently Mr. Bata doesn't register his original songs at all. So I'm going to go ahead for this video and add the tabs back in. If a copyright issue does pop up, I will take down the video and republish it later without the tabs. But let's hope that won't be necessary. Off you go, straight to work. Okay, so let's get to playing then. But first, a few pointers. The guitar is in an alternate tuning this time. So the guitar is tuned to an open G tuning, which means dropping down the low E string to a D, dropping down the low A string to a G, and dropping down the high E string to a D as well. So three out of the six strings are dropped down a full step, giving you D, G, D, G, B, D. That is the full tuning. Now, just to make things a little easier during the rest of the tutorial, I am always going to reference to these strings as being the E string, the A string, and the high E string, despite them being tuned to a different note, just to make things a little bit easier. Um, no pick, no thumb pick, just plain fingers, although Mr. Bata does use long fingernails to play the tune, so he has a very crisp and clear attack to each and every note. I'm not using long fingernails, so it's probably going to sound a little bit different. Let's have a look at the intro first. Here we go. And then we head straight into the first verse. So a few quick blues licks, but because of the open G tuning, you are going to have to use a few different fingerings than what you might be used to. So we start out with a quick bend from the 8th fret up to the 9th fret. And then high E string, 5th fret, B string, 6th fret, G string, 7th fret. Sort of looks like a D minor chord shape up here using index finger, middle finger, ring finger. So bend and you just arpeggiate in reverse E string using the middle finger, B string using the index finger, G string using the thumb. And you play that exact same arpeggio a second time, but you are playing 16 notes. So you have a little bit of timing displacement. One and two and, and then you drop down a small bar at the third fret. If you can hold down 
that ring finger on the sixth fret. If not, just release it, but you are going to have to put it back down really quickly. Next arpeggio is just a small bar across two strings, third fret on the high E string, third fret on the B string, and then that ring finger on the sixth fret, sliding down to the fifth fret. Starting from the first arpeggio, sliding down one more fret from the sixth fret to the fifth fret, and then we add in an open E string, second fret on the B string, and then we're going to pull off from the fifth fret again, if you can hold it down, do so to the third fret. So that last arpeggio, open E string, second fret, fifth fret, pulling off to the third fret. Full arpeggio section. And now we end up on a double stop. Sixth fret across the G string and B string, small bar with the ring finger, sliding down to the fifth fret. Pulling off to the third fret, pulling off to an open string. If it's difficult to pull off from that double stop to just one note, then just re-pick it. But that is what Mr. Bata is doing, sliding down to the fifth fret and then pulling off from two strings to just one string, only the third fret on the G string. To the open G string, and then fifth fret, third fret, and a quick hammer on, and pull off all the way to the open G string. That's the, the rhythm he's using. So fifth fret, third fret, hammer on, pull off, pull off to the open string. To the third fret on the D string, third fret on the G string again, and then open A string, D string, and G string. That last bit. Maybe a bit slower that last lick. And he rounds out the intro with just open E string down below, second fret on the A string, giving you a D power chord because of the alternate tuning. Only that last bar. Now let's try and connect all of that together. First, only the first bar. Only the second bar. That low D chord is actually the third bar, but never mind that. And now we try to connect those two bars. After that final chord, you take a break as long as you want to, and then we head into the first chorus. There's only two choruses, and they're almost identical. There is just one lick different in the second chorus. But as you will see, they are so much fun to play that you probably are going to keep them looping all evening, all day long. At least that's what I did when I first learned how to play the song. Let's have a look at that first chorus. Here we go. into the second chorus. Now, if this isn't fun to play, then I don't know what is. Let's have a look. You start out with that single note uh, run up into the melody. Hammer on from the third fret on the D string to the fifth fret, third fret on the G string to the fifth fret. And then open A string together with a third fret on the G string. 
And now, maybe the most difficult run to time of the whole song is the very first one. Hammer on, slide up to the sixth fret. So hammer on, sorry, to the fifth fret. Slide up to the sixth fret, slide back down. And you end up by pulling off to the third fret again. And that is hard to time out. I, it, I think it's four sixteenth notes and one eighth note. But because of the swing time, it feels a little bit out of place. That's all. And that is the second beat. Three, four, one, two. That's the timing. Now on the second beat, we start with the percussive clicks and the move you are going to make the most is picking with the index finger, the D string, second fret, picking at the same time the middle finger on the G string, just an open G string, while performing a click on the A string or the low E string. That's what you're going to be doing quite often. So the part on the second beat, you leave out the click is just that. D string along with the G string. Second fret, index finger to the third fret and G string just remains open. With the click, only on the first note. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Almost each and every time on the second and the fourth beat, you are going to add that click with the side of the thumb on one of the bass strings. Don't do it too loud. Don't swing the thumb from all the way up here down on that bass string. It's just a light click. Otherwise, you are going to overpower the melody or the bass run or whatever you have to play next. Let's try to get that first bar in full. Next beat is just two bass notes. Open A string, open A string. One, two, three, four. And fourth beat again is picking the second fret on the D string along with the G string while performing the percussive click. One, two, three, four. Now the last one is a click, again with the th thumb on the bass strings. Now we're going to play a quick hammer on and pull off lick. So we're not going to follow that up just with that third fret. Hammering on to the third fret, pulling off to the second fret, pulling off to the open string. If you can manage to do this while keeping that G string ringing out, then that is going to give you the best effect. If not, it passes by so quickly. If the melody is clear, then that is all that is needed. Tempo or the timing in this section is first note a little bit longer. That's what you're going for. Eighth to sixteenth notes and back to an eighth note. With G string on top. And now with the click added, Let's add that to the rest of the bar. And that is already the next bar. Again, just two bass notes. And again, the click with second fret to the third fret. two bass notes to make sure you get that shuffle feel as solid as possible. Another click, but this time not while we're playing that second fret down below, we're sliding up from the fifth fret with the middle finger to the seventh fret on the G string. So really classic blues lick. Really milk that vibrato. Fingering, middle finger from the fifth fret to the seventh fret, index finger, sixth fret, ring finger, eighth fret, and then you're going to hammer back on from the sixth fret to the eighth fret. 
and then really milk that. You can't do it as long as this. You have to shift back really quickly for the bass line. But that is the lick. Under that first note, you are going to add in a click. So, picking with the index finger while, while performing that slide up. And then as you perform the hammer on, you add in another open A string down below. Let's add that to the rest. Then you add in another open A string. And back, second fret, third fret, as we played before. Two open bass strings again, and then second fret on the D string, together with the open G string, together with the click. And now we're going to pull off to the open D string, and we're going to move up the neck. And this is where the trickiest lick of the whole song is going to pop up. First, that third bar by itself. Quickly to the eighth fret, sliding up to the ninth fret with the ring finger. This note lands one eighth note, one eighth triplet note in front of the next beat. So if I count along, one, two, three, four, one. That is how quickly that note has to pop up on the ninth fret. One, two, three, four, one. And on the one, you have again a, just an open bass note. Now we're going to jump around quite a lot. Let me play the next lick in full. Three, four. And moving into the next chord. This is what happens. So you start out with that quick slide, ring finger, from the 8th fret to the 9th fret. I'm going to leave out the bass line and the clicks for now. I'm just going to go over the lick that fits on top of the accompanying part. So from the 8th fret to the 9th fret, small pause for the bass note in between there. And then index finger 5th fret, pulling off to the open string. Sliding up with the ring finger on the G string from the 5th fret to the 7th fret, or from the 6th fret, doesn't make that much difference. 5th fret on top of the high E string, 6th fret on the B string, 7th fret on the G string. We know that from the intro. Now instead of picking that D string a second time, we're going to switch the index finger to the G string and play the fifth fret. See, so the first time you play the seventh fret on the G string, fifth fret, sixth fret, and then you switch the index finger to the fifth fret on the G string. You keep that sixth fret down as long as possible and you make sure that note rings out while you head for that fifth fret on the G string and then you slide up and down to the sixth fret and back down to the fifth fret. See, and as I play this, that sixth fret on the B string is still ringing out. Now, with the ring finger, Mr. Bata starts from the 8th fret, sliding up to the 9th fret on the D string. I think it's a little easier to start from the 7th fret. Sounds a little less bluesy. This is the minor 3rd moving into the major 3rd. Moving from the 7th fret to the 9th fret sounds fine as well, if you think this stretch is really hard to pull off. The last note are, is just an open G string, an open D string, and an, oh, sorry, an open A string, an open D string, and an open G string. But it's not really picked. 
Mr. Bata plays this with the back of the nails to produce a percussive click because this is the fourth beat and we're not adding a click of the thumb and you kind of miss that. So. And then just with the back of the nails across the strings. Hammering on to the third fret, sliding up to the fourth fret. By hammering on, Mr. Bata, I don't know if, if this is intentional, mutes the D string and then slides up. It's also possible to even slide up in, in full bars, sounds plenty bluesy enough, uh, but this is what he does, three strings, hammer on, slide up, and then ends up on the fifth fret for the next chord. Full lick, just the top. Come to think of it, I, I, th I think I even played it with, with a full bar. It is supposed, uh, I mean, in, in the first uh, demonstration, he does play it just hammering on, on the low A string. I think I play the full bar, but as you probably heard, it sounds fine. Uh, now we are going to add in the bass part. So all that happens between that first quick slide going up, three, four, one, two, on the first beat, open G bass string, on that slide going up, you add another click with the thumb, three, four, one, two, so bass note on the one, click on beat number two, on that slide on the fifth fret, another open A string, three, Four, one, two, three, four. And that is why you flick the back of the nails across the strings on that fourth beat to get a little bit of a per percussive effect on, on just that, that one chord because you're not playing the click there. And slowly, it sounds a little bit disconnected up to speed. It sounds all as if that, that click is just going on. One more time, really slowly. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Moving to the fifth fret again. Just it's probably a habit, but I, I'm I'm using a full bar. It's supposed to be open string, only the A string to the fourth fret, and then end up on the fifth fret. Let's try to play that third and fourth bar back to back with each other. up on the fifth fret. Before we continue into the next few bars, let me play the first four bars all on the G chord all the way through to this point. Fifth fret revolves around the bar from the low A string to the high E string. And you just start with two bass notes on the fifth fret and then you add in, you sort of end up with a D minor seven chord shape and you're going to play seventh fret on the D string with the ring finger and sixth fret on the B string with the middle finger while keeping down the bar on the fifth fret. And again, you try to pick with the index finger on the D string, with the ring finger on the B string. If you want to, you can even pick in the G string in between there too, while adding a click with the thumb. And I'm sort of using a pullback motion while I'm picking my fingers go up and my thumb clicks down. So it's kind of this motion that happens. And you drop out those two fingers, you drop down the bar one fret, you pick each string from the A string, D string, G string, B string, and you move up one fret again. That's the 
full move. You pick that bass note one more time. You add in the same two fingers, 7th fret, 6th fret, while playing with a click again. And now you're going to pull off to the 5th fret. Now the biggest stretch of the whole tune is you have to add in the 8th fret with her ring finger on the D string, 8th fret with the pinky on the B string, while holding down the bar on the 5th fret. If this is too hard, then leave out the ring finger and play the G string, 5th fret with the bar, instead of that 8th fret on the D string. It's still the same chord, you're just dropping out the flat 7th degree, so it's a power chord or a major chord instead of a dominant seventh chord. So this is the full uh, version. That was the hard version with the stretch, now the easy version. And I'm, I don't want to change anything the original composer intended, but this can make the difference between being able to play the song in full or not at all. Um, we stay on the same chord. We do the exact same thing as we did in the previous bar. Two bass notes and then 7th fret, 6th fret while adding the click. We move back down to the 4th fret. Now we add in, you can use the ring finger on the 6th fret on the G string and we're going to slide that back up. I sometimes use the pinky as well for this note, just because I'm used to playing octaves like this. But I think Mr. Bataille uses the ring finger. So hold down the bar, ring finger on the 6th fret, and you slide that up to the 7th fret as well. 5th fret, high E string, drop down the pinky, 6th fret, and that is the full lick. Back to back. fingers straight away and you strike back down with the nail and you try to hit the A string, D string and G string, holding down a small bar on the 5th fret, sliding up to the 6th fret, sliding back down to the 5th fret. And then just open strings, you try to hit the A string, D string and G string or you try to get as close as possible and then we move back down to the G chord. That, uh, only that sixth bar. Is going to be the follow up, but that is just that one bar. One, two, three, four, one. On the first beat you end up on the third fret in just a second. First, those two bars on that C chord, the fourth degree back to back. Three, four, one. Is the next bar. As you can see it's rather loose with which strings you catch when you do those strums but a little bit of extra string buzz actually even helps in this style. You end up on the first beat on the third fret, you slide up to the fourth fret and you go back to just open strings. You can re-pick that, I think Mr. Batai uses a pull-off for the last section. Not even really sure again, but it sounds fine both of them. So if you want to slide up and pull off, that is fine. If you want to slide up and re-pick, that will sound fine as well. But remember, you have to switch straight back to the second beat, second fret, third fret, as we played a number of times before now. So you get this, three, four, back to the same riff we played before. And in this, uh, aspect, it seems logical to play a pull-off because you can then bring the picking hand back into the right position to follow it straight up with that percussive click. We know that part, so the first beat, one, two, three, 
just the bass note. One, two, three, four, one. We play that like before, pull off to the open string, and then a quick slide to the ninth fret. Three, four. Again, to the fifth fret and a pull off to the open string. Now we're not going to play that difficult or, or that winding lick anymore. You just move down, pinky, to the third fret on the high E string, index finger, second fret on the D string. And these two notes sound a bit strange together, but again, once you speed it up, it will sound fine. Second fret together with the third fret, and then we move up, same strings, a high E string, fifth fret, D string, third fret. the G string underneath, it sounds fine. In full. Now on that first chord, second fret, third fret, you have to add in a click as well. So using the index finger on the D string, using the ring finger on the high E string, and a click at the same time on the bass notes again. And I don't know if it's intentional, this is the only time in the whole song that you have to play three bass notes in a row. So an open A bass note when you move to the next chord. And two separate bass notes following that up. Like in full. Same thing, striking the A string, D string and G string, hammer on on the 5th fret, sliding up to the 6th fret and then ending up on the 7th fret for the next chord. Those two bars in full. Then you end up on the 7th fret and we're going to use the same chord shape as we did before down here. 6th fret, sorry, 7th fret, 6th fret, now this is going to become 9th fret and 8th fret. Same thing as we played before, here. Same pull off, the, all the exact same thing. Now instead of going for that big stretch, we're just going to move the whole bar down to the 6th fret. this chord we're going to use the exact same thing and we end up on that big stretchy chord shape again if you want to you can go for the easy option again leaving out the ring finger but I also have to include one thing because I'm not 100% sure what the intention was here because I think the first time around Mr. Bata plays a harmonic on the bass string instead of a fretted bass note but he can really pop out that harmonic with those long fingernails and I can't get it to sound out above the melody note. So I always just play the full chord using the bass note. If you, want, if you have those long fingernails, then try to get the harmonic out of that bass note instead of just fretting the note. Then you move the index finger to the low E string, fifth fret, and you slide up to the tenth fret. those two bars back to back. And now a big run in an octave shapes that look like this because of the alternate tuning. So 10th fret on the high E string, 10th fret on the D string. We're going to slide that up to the 11th fret and back down the 8th fret, back to the 10th fret, sliding to the 8th fret, sliding to the 5th fret. That's the full lick. And Mr. Bata closes out that first chorus with a quick blues lick. Which 
which is kind of similar to what we played in the intro. This is familiar, sliding from the 5th fret to the 7th fret, 5th uh, fret index finger, 6th fret, middle finger, again moving the index finger from the 5th fret on the E string to the G string. Now we're going to play a double stop. So we're going to pick the G string and B string at the same time and perform the same slide up and down as before. We let go and we drop down two frets to the third fret on the G string, pulling off to an open string. And then fifth fret on the G string, ring finger, pulling off to the third fret, pulling off to the open string. Third fret on the D string, pulling off to an open string. Third fret on the A string, and then we end up on open A string, open D string, open D string, G string, sorry. Now, Mr. Bata performs some sort of blues curl, a small blues bend on that last third fret, and he pushes the timing for the last chord just a little bit to the back before actually finishing up on that chord. Just that last lick. With the bar in front of that. That is the full ending run. Uh, let me try to follow that up starting from the bar at the seventh fret. straight into the next chorus and the next chorus is almost the exact same thing apart from one lick in the middle and all the way at the ending Mr. Bata plays a blistering blues lick but before we get there uh, let's play through this chorus one more time really really slowly The second chorus is just going to add in one extra fill and a blistering blue slick all the way at the end, but that is something for part two. See you there. Mm -hmm. 